Today, we're talking MQTT. So recently, I had a request to make a video about cloud-based MQTT services, and I tried. I tried to use those services. There were a couple of caveats to that, though, which drove me to do my own local MQTT server. The first is you need to make a TLS connection from your devices over to the MQTT server. That presents a problem because some of my devices will not do that. The second is cost. Some of these services are free. However, some of them require you to pay for them. For the paid for services, if you are capable of doing this yourself and you don't have a use case for having a cloud-based service, then you don't need to pay for it because you can do it for free. Now, I realize that these services are in business to make money, that's fine. Uh, I will support them when I need to, but for what I'm doing, I don't need to pay for a service like that. And third, it's cloud-based, which means that if you lose internet connection, you lose access to your MQTT broker, and then all your stuff potentially will stop working. Keeping it local is the way to go. So why do we want to do anything with MQTT? Well, MQTT is the backbone of many IoT devices and how they communicate to their controlling hubs or whatever else, in our case, Home Assistant. So you need an MQTT broker to handle that communication between the devices and whatever is controlling them. As an example, let me show you a little bit of what I'm running with MQTT. Most of these items here, these topics are coming from MQTT based devices. So we have a lot of Tasmoda devices here that I run for sensors and, and controlling different things. I have my Nest devices running over MQTT. All of my Z-Wave devices talk over MQTT and that you can see is a huge portion of my network. And there's some other stuff here that we also use such as Frigate for uh, my cameras and notifications of, of uh, things that go on with the cameras. MQTT plays a big part in my IoT and home automation setup, so it's important to have a good MQTT broker. Now you can run MQTT directly in Home Assistant. There is an add-on for that. And in fact, that's the way I'm running it. But I do want to show you today an alternative for running an MQTT standalone server on another piece of hardware within your local network. So we're going to make a couple of assumptions here. The first assumption is that you have what's called Portainer installed, and I'm running Portainer on a VM. So if you look right here, this is my Portainer instance, and I'm running a number of containers here. What I'm going to take you through today is I'm going to take you through actually building out the MQTT container and how to configure it so that you can talk to it from your IoT devices. So let's get started into that, and I'll go through a step-by-step -step process for doing that. Because this is a Docker container that we're talking about, the first thing we wanna do is create some storage so that if you remove and recreate this container for some reason, that all of that data is persistent on your, uh, your machine or whatever you're running uh, the Docker container on. Otherwise, when you destroy a container, you will lose all of the settings and all of the retained values that are in that container if you don't have some sort of persistent storage. So to do that, we're going to come over here and we're going to create some volumes. So let's go ahead and build out some volumes. And you want to build out some specific volumes because you're going to want to have data, you're going to want to have configuration, and you're, you're going to want to have logging. So we're going to add three different volumes. The first one we're going to call uh, Mosquito, or MQTT for short, uh, config. And all of these options will remain the same. There's nothing to change here. We'll create another one called MQTT data and we'll be using these later on that's why we're doing them now and then you want to do a final one mqtt log and we're going to create those volumes let me make this a little bit smaller all right so now we have three different mqtt volumes that's where our data is going to go our configuration is going to be read from etc this is all very simple if you're using portainer because you can just follow through the ui settings or follow through using the UI. You can also build this directly on the command line if you want to SSH into your VM or whatever you're running this on and build it that way. But I'm going to show you the UI version. Since a lot of us are used to using the UI in Home Assistant and other things, this makes it a lot simpler. All right, so we're going to click on containers over here and we're going to add a container. And this is where it gets a little specific on some of these options, so just pay attention here. I'm going to call this one MQTT and the registry is Docker Hub. And this is where it's going to pull the container from, or the Docker image. It needs to have an image in order for it to know how to build it. And the, the, uh, the Docker Hub 
has tons and tons of different images, basically a library of getting all of your different stuff. And we can search for, let's just say MQTT, for example. And this is the one we're gonna use, but there's dozens and dozens of different types of MQTT related containers. So we're gonna actually use the Eclipse Mosquito, it's a dash. This is the container that it's gonna go get from Docker Hub and put onto our local VM. We always want to pull the image and of course, it says here, if you're using an anonymous account, you will be limited to 100 pulls every six hours. We're doing this once, so you shouldn't have to worry about that unless you've been doing other stuff. I uh, will leave this all the same. Uh, we're going to come down here and do a couple things. Number one, I want to have an interactive console. So I'm just going to select that at the beginning. Volumes is important. This is where we're going to we're going to map those volumes that we created to locations within the Docker container itself so that this Docker container knows where to get or store the data. So we're gonna map three different volumes. So I'll click it three times. And the first one is going to be slash mosquito slash config. And we're gonna select a volume from those that we have already created. That's why it's important to create the volumes first. This will be config. The next one of course will be mosquito. And mosquito is spelled funny. So make sure you spell it correctly. It's two T's. Is that how you spell it in real life? Hmm. Well, anyway, two T's for mosquito on this anyway. Data will be this container. And we are going to choose that volume. And then finally, mosquito with two T's, log. And we're going to select the log container. So those are the three volume mappings that we're going to create for this. The network, we want to change one setting here, and that is to make this the host. The environment, we're going to leave alone. Labels alone, restart policy. We want to restart this anytime the system restarts, unless we have explicitly stopped that MQTT container. You can do never, always, on failure, or unless stop. If you wanted to always restart no matter what, let's say you stop it and then you reboot something uh, in your system here and you want it to automatically restart, you want to do always. But I'm just going to set for unless stopped. All right, uh, runtime resources and everything else will stay the same. Then you just click on this deploy container button and you should have a nice, pretty green, uh, successfully created box up here. And we see that it is running. So we have now created volumes, we've installed the container and we've started up and running in specific mode. What I wanna show you first actually is I wanna show you the console access here. I wanna show you what it's doing. Or we're gonna open a, a console with the bin shell environment. And here it is right here. Let me shrink it a little bit. And all I want to show you now is I'm using a command called netstat, and it's going to tell me what ports are currently being opened on this Docker container for things to listen to. And I want to look specifically for port 1883 because that's the MQTT port. And you can see here that this port is currently open as default settings are set up in the, the broker or the MQTT container. These This only listening on the local host. That means if I try to connect to this with any application or any uh, device from outside of the, the local container here, the local host, it's not gonna do it. It won't reach it because it's not listening to anything but the local loopback interface. So what we need to do now, since we're currently running default settings, we need to go into our configuration and we need to set up the settings we want to run with this MQTT instance or this broker's instance. So we're already on the, the system in a shell for, and we're in the Docker container environment for the MQTT broker. So I'm gonna first see where I'm at. I'm in the root directory. I wanna change to the mosquito directory and I wanna change further into the mosquito config directory. And now if I do an LS, which is a directory listing, I can see that I have the mosquito.conf file. That is created by default from the container when you download it from the Docker hub. It's gonna be full of all kinds of stuff. And we can look at that real quick. Let me just do less on this one. You can just see there's tons and tons and tons of settings in here that you can set up with this, within this Mosquito Broker configuration. We don't need to do all that stuff right now. We're gonna make it simple. I'm gonna show you a configuration that I use that will allow you to connect to this Mosquito Broker anonymously from anywhere that it can be reached in this network. So the first thing to do is I'm going to copy that mosquito.conf file to a backup so that if I want to look at the settings in there, I still have that as a reference. So that's now copied over. I'm going to edit the original configuration file 
and I'm using VI and there's a shortcut in VI to del delete all of the, or delete lots of lines at once. I'm gonna type 1000, so 1000 DD. I don't know how many lines in there. Well, there's 901 lines. So I just deleted 901 lines from the file. I mean, it's a shortcut I use all the time. So you, if you have your favorite way of editing things or using Nano or something else, that's fine. So now I'm gonna hit I for insert and I'm gonna copy the configuration that I'm using and I'm gonna place it right in here. And then we'll talk about it briefly. So I've got that copied and I'm gonna paste it. And this is my current configuration. Persistence is true. Persistence location is mosquito slash data. That's why it's important to map those volumes because that's where it's going to store that data. If you remove this container and you map the and you create it again and you map all of the, vol the volumes the same, all of this data will still be in that same place as long as you have this persistence location set. We're going to run as user mosquito. We're going to listen on port 1883. This one here, allow anonymous true, that lets connections come from anywhere on any interface if you set it this way. Also, it doesn't require any kind of credentials to connect to it. Then our destination for logs is here. So I'm gonna hit escape. I'm gonna hit colon WQ and I'm gonna save it. Now we have saved that, but it's not using it yet. So what we need to do next is we need to, I'm gonna go ahead and control D and disconnect out of here. Go back to my MQTT container up here and I'm gonna restart it. So click on restart. And I always like to look at the logs to see what's going on. And it'll tell me whether it's starting or if it has any issues. If you mess up that config file, uh, it will show here that it didn't start correctly. You can either go log into the terminal of the host that's running this Docker container, or you can just start over. You can delete the container and start again, which might be your best way to deal with an issue. All right, so everything's up and running. So let me go back into the console again, and I wanna show you that I have a, the ability to listen to it or connect to it from everywhere. So now if I do that same netstack command, we're gonna grep 1883. Now, instead of local loopback interface, it's now listening on all, all IP addresses. And you can actually control this with the listen command. If you only want it listening on a single interface, you can control it with the listener command. You would put the port, and then you would put the IP address after that of what you would allow it to connect from, or where connections could come in from. Okay, so now let's take a quick check here. This is my production, but let me disconnect from this one. Uh, there's no username or password here. This is the host name or the IP address and the port of my new MQTT instance or broker that I just set up. I can click on connect and now I'm connected to it. And this is without any kind of authentication. It just lets me connect to it because that's the way I have it set up. So now you have a successfully deployed MQTT broker running on a Docker container in your virtual machine or wherever you want to run it. All right, so let's just say that we don't want to allow access from uh, anywhere without some sort of uh, credentials. So what I'm gonna show you now is how to update your configuration to provide credentials so that you can restrict access from people connecting to this. And it's a simple command. We're gonna use a command and we're already here on the console, so we'll just stay on the console. This is a command called mosquito password, P-A-S-S-W-D. And we're gonna create a new credentials file, so dash C, and we're gonna put it in our configuration directory, and we're gonna call it the file credentials. And you need to remember the file name because you're gonna use this in a minute in the configuration. And then I'll take a space and I'll give it a username. So we'll just use the username MQTT for now. Hit enter, it's gonna ask me to create a password and verify it. I have now created a credentials file, so we can look at that in the config directory actually. So you can see here that I have a credentials file and this credentials file contains a hash password and a username so that you can set it up to only allow connections uh, with that password and, or username and password. And while we're in this configuration directory, we're gonna make a couple of changes to our configuration file. So let's go back into VI uh, of, or let's VI the configuration file. And we're gonna first change this allow anonymous. We're gonna change this to false. So I will just make this false. It will now no longer allow anonymous connections. It requires the password. And the password file, we're gonna define that. And we're gonna give it the path name relative to the Docker container. So mosquito config credentials. And we're gonna write those changes. And we're gonna get back out of here again. And we're gonna restart the container. So let's restart it. There we go. 
We're restarting the container. And now if we look at the log, let's make sure we didn't mess anything up. All right, so it's up and running. Everything's good to go. And what we wanna do now is I'm gonna pull up the MQTT Explorer again. I'm gonna try to connect. There's no username and no password here. So let me try to connect. And now you get a connection refuse, not authorized. So now we put in the username and the password that I generated with that uh, generation command and that's saved in the credentials file. We're going to connect to it. And there we go. Now we're able to restrict access to that MQTT broker uh, without a username, if it doesn't have a username or password. Now there's further options you can set up if you wanna do certificates, TLS encryption, or anything else that will prevent snooping on there. This is running on my local network. So there's a little modicum of security there because it's not exposed to the outside world. But you can set up encryption between the MQTT broker and, and any devices. Now you have to have, your devices have to be able to do uh, TLS connections or whatnot. So how do we know it's working? Well, first of all, we can see that it's working here. But now what I wanna do is I wanna show you one of my devices that I use. Uh, I've got a little, um, temperature sensor that's got Tasmoda on it. Tasmoda is a big user of MQTT for all of its communication. So I'm gonna configure that to show you how it does talk to my new MQTT broker. So let's go into that device. So we'll open up a new tab here and we'll go into the device itself. So this is a, one of my plugs, my S31 plugs, and I'm going to just change the configuration and point the MQTT uh, host to a different device and I'll change the username and password as well. So this is one, two, two, one, six, one, one. This is the host of my uh, VM that's running MQTT. And because I'm running in host mode on the container, it's going to go directly into this port 1883, which is what we have set up. And I'm going to change this to MQTT for the user. And then the password that I set up, we'll save it. And let's jump over to MQTT Explorer. And after that reboots and does an update, we will see right here, that that device is now talking to my new MQTT broker. And we can get, you know, various stats and things that are coming across on here from that device. And you can see what it's sending over to it right now. So it's a very quick demonstration of it actually taking in data from a device and putting it into the MQTT broker. Well, let's say we want to use this MQTT broker with Home Assistant. Well, in many cases, once you have this on the network, if it's on the same network segment as your Home Assistant instance, Home Assistant's actually going to discover it. It may take a restart of Home Assistant, but after it restarts, you should be able to see it. And one thing you can do is to tell is see this notifications down here. And you'll see up here that you have new devices discovered. Check it out. And here it is, MQTT. So you can configure this directly from the uh, the interface, you don't have to go into any YAML to do this. So we're going to put in our new broker address, which is the 153. Port 1883 is where we are, uh, or where we're at. And then MQTT is the user and then the password that I set up for it. And we'll submit it. And it's finished now. And now we have an MQTT broker. And what we can do with this is we can go into configure and we can just kind of listen to everything that's going on within the MQTT broker. So if you have a good connection, once you do a listen to uh, basically everything, you'll see that you have stuff coming in from the broker and this confirms that you're now connected to the broker. Now, the one thing you'll have to do with Home Assistant, if you're using this method, is in most cases, the uh, actual MQTT entries are not built for you. So you're gonna have to do a little YAML work to actually build the MQTT entries. That's out of scope for this video, something we can do in a different video if you would like, just let me know down in the comments. So now you have a working MQTT broker that you installed yourself on a virtual machine that you can put any of your MQTT related traffic into, and then also take Home Assistant, connect to that, and be able to pull in information from a Home Assistant and also send out commands from Home Assistant to the MQTT devices through that broker. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. I really appreciate my channel members for joining the channel as well. You'll see them uh, over here, over here, right here, going up past my head. And then if you're not a channel member, I really would appreciate it if you would join the channel. It really helps support what I do here. And you can also talk to me on Discord if you would like to. I answer questions there as much as I can as well. So have a great rest of your day or evening or whatever, and we will see you on the next one.